Hello, this is Paul from Fossil Tech. In this video, let's prove theorem 2.3.7, Kramer's rule. Uh, Kramer's rule is an imp important application for the inverse matrix defined by joint matrix. Uh, so, another reason why Kramer's rule is important is because, see, if we have a linear system, and the conclusion give us we can separate it or individually find each x, okay. And the definition, okay, the results. Is the first unknown is determined of a one over determined of a. A is the coefficient of the linear system. A one defined it by this, okay. A one is the original coefficient matrix a. Uh, replace the first column by the constant term, the constant back to B. Okay. So put a B to the first column of A, we get A1. And the same A2 is put B to the second column of A, we get A2. And the, until AN, you see, separate all the X. So it's very good. But how? Let's prove it. Um, because we have a linear system, A x equals B, right? We can solve for the vector x because A is invertible, therefore we can left multiply. Uh, let me just put here. Let me put here first. Because A x equals B. A is invertible, therefore I can find that the uh, unknown vector x should be the inverse of a multiplied by the vector b. Okay, so remember the size of a is n by n <coughs> because this is because a is invertible. Uh, and then again, remember this uh, inverse of a equals 1 over determinant of a times a joint matrix of a. Uh, this uh, just uh, we proved in the previous theorem. Uh, 2.3.7 Okay, let's see. Okay, we proved it before. And therefore we plug this in. What do we get? We get x already. Okay, so x should be 1 over determinant of a and then a joint of a. What's a joint of a? Uh, a joint of a, let's put here, okay, which uh, I remember the cofactor put in the original order but then transpose. Therefore, the first column should be C11, C12, and then C1N, right? Second column should be C21, C22, C2N, and then goes on, goes on, goes on. To the last column is CN1, CN2, CNN. Okay, this is the definition of the joint. And then times the matrix is B. So let me put the B matrix as a B1, B2 goes on to BN. Okay, so this is the first step. See, we already got the matrix, uh, the back of the X. Now we do calculation for matrix multiplication. Uh, here is just a coefficient live here and we can calculate it. So this is n by n, this is n by 1. So to multiplication we get n by 1, a column, right? Exactly, because x vector is a column. Okay, so what do we get? And also x, let's uh, put it in this order. X, the first unknown, the second unknown. And yet the last, this is x. Okay. And 
attempt a do calculation, which is a big metric, uh, a column. The first the time is the first column. So what is a uh, that's a B? Let me put B one, C one one, right? B two, C two one, and then goes on B N C N one. Okay, so that the first step, uh, the first entry in the column, and then the second is the second row multiplied by the column of B, which is a B one, C one two, B two, C two two, goes on. B N C N two, and then I ignore in the middle. The last there should be B one C one N plus B two C two N, and then B N C N N. Okay, now we do have this is the column. This is the column. Therefore, x one should be the coefficient that comes the first. I can two the coefficient and the second and then goes on right. Now let's uh, look at the x one first. See, we already uh, separate the x. So what is x one? Therefore, x one should be one over determinant of a. Multiply this, which is b one c one one, b two c two one. Goes to B N C N one. Oh, how to calculate this? Okay, it's not as difficult. You just have to think about it here, and this is the most important part. See, the most important part is find this. Uh, to find this, we have to define A one, which we just introduced. Okay, why? So I can define strange C. Um, let's define uh, the first column that we put B1, B2, which is A1. So you can think about it, A1. Let's put it here. So the determinant, or I directly put it, uh, determinant, what is determinant of A1? By the definition, determinant of A1 is this. The first column uh, is B right, so this is a B one, B two, go to B n, and the others is the original A one, <clears throat> which is uh, A two. Oh no, sorry, A one two, A one two, A one three. That 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 goes to A one and A two. Oops, sorry. A two two the second because the first column is already replaced by the constant B. So this is a A two two A two three A two and and then it goes on. You can on and then B. A N two A N three goes to A N N Okay. So we compare this is the determinant of A one exactly equal to that Y. See? Uh if we expand so if we expand this constructed, okay, that's a major part of this theorem. And if we expand the first row, we exactly get here, if we expand um, by the first row, ah, okay. uh, the first column, which is B one, B two, B n. Can you see? So B one, we should times what? We should times the cofactor in this A one, which is this part. But this part is exactly the same as the cofactor or the minor for the original matrix A, right? See, think about the A1 and the A, what the difference. 
only difference is in the first color. And all the other colors are the same. So the cofactor for the first column should be exactly the same, right? Okay, good. So what do we have? Exactly the same. So this equals the determinant, okay? Equal determinant of A1. Therefore, uh, determinant of A1 should be the numerate and then the nominate is determinant, okay? So we have determinant of A1 is the numerator and the denominator is the determinant of A. Yeah, see, this is the one we need, right? Definitely I find X1 and then the same. Okay, you can find X2. Um, let's copy it. So the X2 is here. Oh, let's just look at it. See, so X2 should be the coefficient that I'm in the second column. And then I look at the A2. Uh, A2, which is uh, the original A, uh, changed the second color by the matrix B, and then do the same, expand it by the second color. Okay, you can get uh, the numerator will be a determinant of A2. Okay, the denominator is the same, and then goes on. <clears throat> you can get uh, similarly. You can find that all the arcs k should be equals the determinant of a k expanded by the kth column of a k and then over determinant of a k and the k equals one to go to and the last. Okay, so how did we get this? It's the same. Okay, we just uh, Expand uh, determinant of uh, a k. Okay, did you say expand the uh, the kth column? Okay, so by the kth column. And then you exactly get it. Okay. The case number here. Okay. Um, that's the basic idea for this uh, theorem. Thank you.